company. How you doing? My name is Robbie, and I'm what you would probably call a shade tree mechanic. Now, being a shade tree mechanic has its advantages. Some people don't think so, but most of us who worry about money do. You know, there's a lot of things you can do to your car yourself that you're probably paying somebody else to do, or at least should be if you're not doing it yourself. And if you did do it yourself, could save yourself a lot of money, several hundred dollars a year. <clears throat> so I've been asked to come here and show you some of those little things, such as today we're going to specialize in how to change your own oil. Now, uh, you can ask professional mechanics. They'll tell you that oil is the life of your engine. If you keep it changed as often as you should and keep oil in your engine, you'll never have an engine problem. Most of the time, that's true. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. However, if you decide to become a, a do-it-yourselfer like me, you seem to think you can save a lot of money and you like the idea, most likely, most of the time when you work on your car, you're going to need jacks to do it. Now, a jack is a little thing you put under your car and raise the front end or the back end of your car up or the side or whatever you need to work on at the time. Now, I'd like to give you a short briefing on jacks here because some jacks they sell in little commercial places aren't too safe and it's a good idea not to use them. I'll we'll start with this little machine right here is called a hydraulic jack. It works pretty simple. It's got a little hydraulic screw here. You just take your pair of pliers. Tighten it up, put the rod in here that comes with it, start jacking. Now, I'm not going to give you a demonstration because I don't like the jack at all. It's dangerous. Usually when you have a floor jack such as this is not a floor jack. This is a floor jack. I'll get to that in a second. Usually when you have a little jack such as this one, it's a hydraulic jack, as I said. You have to get axle stands such as these to go with them. It's kind of an unnecessary expense to buy a little jack like this anyway and have to get something extra to go with them. However, I'm not knocking these. These are extra safety precautions, and when you're underneath the car, you can't be too safe. When you raise it up with this little jack, it's absolutely necessary to put one of each of these underneath the axle of your car. That way, when this falls, which it'll do sooner or later, this will catch it. That way, you don't get flattened out like a pancake. Now, if you're going to use a hydraulic jack type jack, kind I suggest is what they call a floor jack. That's what this is. Okay, this is a pretty simple operation. It works on the same principle as this, but it doesn't fall over as easy as this. It's pretty simple. Put a lot of weight on this, a little bit on one side, and before you know it, it's gone over like so. Okay, this doesn't work that way. You put this underneath your car, jack it up. This thing comes up. I'm sorry I didn't bring the material to jack it with because I already have my own jack out here. But, uh, this is more safe, it's more balanced, and the car won't turn over near so easy. It's still a good idea to use an axle stand when you do this. Now I'm going to get to the part about changing the oil. Most cars, when you change your oil, you're going to have to jack it up anyway. Some cars you don't. Some cars are pretty high off the ground where you won't have to. Most of the time you're going to have to, however. Now to change your oil, you go most places, uh, they average, if you catch them when they're on special, you can get your oil changed for about $13 at a bare minimum, most of the time. Uh, on the average, they're about $15 on up. Okay, I'm going to show you how to change your oil yourself in 15 minutes for about 8 bucks. Okay, that's a small savings, about what, 6 bucks there? 7 bucks, whatever, something like that. You're going to need an initial expense, however, to buy you a few minor tools to do it, or you can borrow one of these, a wrench. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. One of these, a spout, or you can use a funnel if you like, but I like a spout. It's cleaner and neater. One of these is called an oil filter wrench. Okay, you can get one of these for a couple of bucks, one of these for a couple of bucks, and one of these for a dollar and a quarter on up, depending on what kind of quality you want. And a couple things that's nice to have on hand when you do it to come in pretty handy is a pan to catch your oil in, unless you want a real mess, and a rag to wipe your hands on when you're done because they're probably going to get a little messy too. Some people are pretty good at it and they don't get their hands messy, but I do. What about that shirt? How much you pay for that shirt? This shirt? You can wear anything. Don't worry about the shirt. <laughs> You can, uh, you can wear a sweatshirt, anything you don't want to get dirty. I mean, anything you do want to get dirty. Scratch that. Okay. Now, the kind of jack I use when I'm working on anything except my wheels are called ramps. 
And they're pretty simple. The name speaks for itself. This is a ramp. Simple enough. Now, the way you use these ramps, you stick them in front of each wheel. If you're going to work on the bike, it works the same way with the back. Get them right down close. Do the same on the other side. And then have a friend guide you up on them. And have somebody stand up in front while you pull the car up on the ramps. That way you don't drive over the edge. Am I straight? It's good enough. All right. That's as far as it's going to go. <clears throat> Considering I'm out here on the grass today, they won't come all the way up on the ramp without leaving a patch in the grass. So what I'm going to do is use these axle stands that I just finished telling you about. Put underneath my axles. That way, if the car does come down, the ramps give way. However, I've never seen a ramp give way, and I doubt if they ever will. These will catch it for me. I wouldn't want to look like a pancake when I got done. Now, hang on tight. Next thing we gotta do is take the oil out of the car. That's a pretty simple job. See, this here is an oil pan, and underneath every car, there's an oil pan. Somewhere, some way, there's an oil pan. Now, if you, you know, kind of a novice at changing your oil, you might wanna ask somebody in the neighborhood, somebody that knows for sure, make sure you got the right oil pan and not the transmission pan. Now, the transmission pan is normally located behind the oil pan. So if you see two pans, it's the one in front. Okay, pretty simple. Now there's a screw or a plug, whatever you want to call it, right here by the oil pan. On the oil pan, excuse me. Okay, just take the wrench I told you about. Loosen the screw. Put a pan under here because you're going to get about five quarts of oil. Most American-made cars carry five quarts, so make sure your container's big enough. Now, pretty soon, we're going to have a little mess. Now, if you're careful, you won't get too messy in the process. Here we go. There you go. Now, that is the old oil you've used for the last 5,000 miles. It's black and gritty. It's about time for some more. Now, when this is empty, pretty simple job. Just put the screw back in. Now, some standard mistakes are a lot of people leave the oil plug out, start to put the new oil in. You run new oil out all over the ground before you realize what you've done. Then you got to do it all over again. I've done that myself. So always be sure that when the oil is finished draining, Put the plug back in. You know, we got a few seconds left. Doesn't take so long to drain five quarts, does it? It'll probably take about another 30 seconds. What about a washer on the on the plug there? Does some of them have little fiber washers on the plug that you replace every so often? Or? Uh, I've never replaced one. Oh, I've, okay. I'm glad you mentioned that because mine looks like it needs changing. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get to that when I put it on. Okay. You ever done this before? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, it sounded like it. I've done all the wrong things, I believe. Yeah, that's how I learned about I always put the plug back in when you before you put the oil in. I poured three quarts out on the ground doing that one day. Made you feel real good, didn't it? Oh yeah, about three dollars worth. 
Okay. Now that the oil's out, start the plug back in by hand. Now, when you tighten the plug, everybody's first reaction is to tighten it just as hard as it'll go. That's not a good idea because it will strip out. Now by strip out, if you don't know what I mean, it means the threads on the screw will give way and then it won't be any good anymore, which means you have to go down to your local shop and have it fixed, and that's expensive. So what you do, you just tighten it until it's snug. Get it just snug enough that the oil won't run out. Maybe a little snugger, but don't give it all you have. Okay. You can do whatever you like with this old oil. Top out front and I'll tell you about it. Now these five quarts of old oil comes in kind of handy sometimes, depending on what kind of person you are. If you like to keep your yard looking good, keep weeds out of it, it's guaranteed to kill weeds. <laughs> You take it down to your local fence row and pour it where you got all that big grass or the weeds you don't want and pour it on there. Whatever it gets under, it'll kill. Some people use it on their tires. They like to make their tires black. Now, I don't know about that. I wouldn't do that myself, but it's been done. If you want to try it, go for it. Now, you're going to need about a half a teaspoon of that in just a minute here anyway. The next procedure, you have to take your oil filter off. Every car's got an oil filter. Now, I'm gonna show you an oil filter here. On this car, the oil filter hangs upside down, like this. Now, we won't be able to get a camera in to show it to you, but it'd be relatively simple to find. Like I said, on this car, it hangs upside down like so. Some cars, they're mounted on the side. I've never seen one right side up, and I don't think they make them that way, but most of them are hanging upside down or on the side. Relatively easy to get to, that's what the oil filter wrench is for. Now, just like anything, you turn it clockwise to tighten it, counterclockwise to loosen it. Now, you climb underneath your car, find the oil filter, connect the wrench to it, get it good and tightened up, loosen it up, because it's gonna be pretty tight when you get down there. After it's ridden on your car for about 5,000 miles or so, it's gonna be tight, so that's what you need the wrench for. Get down and just give it a little yank like so, and it'll loosen. Loosen it with your hands, take it right off, dump it in the trash can. Unlike the oil, these aren't good for anything when you're done. Take a new one, pretty simple job. Take some of this old oil, some people like to use a new oil, it doesn't matter really. It has a rubber seal around the outside of this filter. Put oil all around that seal. See, this makes it seal tight when you put it back on the car with no air leaks. That way you don't lose any oil. Okay, hang on tight. Now I'm going to go under and take this one off. Is it coming? Yeah. I'm fixing to get a face full of oil. That wouldn't look good. Pretty simple, right? It won't spill any more than a quart, so don't worry about the size of the container. There we go. Okay, putting the new filter on is simply taking the old one off. Now, the threads on a filter will strip out pretty easy. So make sure when you got it started on, you got it started on good. Just like a screw, it screws on a shaft up here. Has threads in it. 
Now, the reason the threads on the filter strip out before the threads on the engine do is because it's a lot cheaper to buy a new oil filter than it is to buy a new engine. Now, just spin the oil filter until it stops. Tighten it until the gasket makes contact with the engine. You can feel it. It'll make contact. Then turn it three quarters of a turn. No more, no less. Most people can do that with their hands, but I'm lazy. I like to do it with a wrench. One word of caution here. While you got the oil out of your car, don't start it. If you're a novice at this, don't think, well, I've got the oil out. I'll run down to the supermarket and I'll put the oil in when I get back because you'll probably never make it to the supermarket. Uh, the oil is, like I said earlier, the life for your engine. Without the oil, your engine won't go a mile or so. And in fact, it probably wouldn't make it from here to my driveway. Don't ever start the car with no oil. Shall I say oil? Just raise your hood on top of your engine. There's always a place to put your oil in. Uh, some engines have got them most any place. Some engines will have a long spout sticking out and you have a little top on it, you see, and you can just shoot a little oil in there. Some of them, in fact, most of them have like I have here. Got a simple little cap on top of what they call a valve cover gasket. You'll be able to see it. Normally, it's the only, on the new car, normally it's the only thing that doesn't have pollution control all bunched around it. Okay, well, there's the hole, that's where the oil goes. I showed you this little contraption earlier, it's called a spout. Now, some people like to use funnels. I like to use a spout. Like I said, it's neater, it's cleaner. A little more expensive, but uh, it's worth it. These, also, like the filter wrenches, if you get a real cheap one, will fall apart sooner or later. So what I did, I invested about two fifty or three dollars in this one, and this one will last a long time. Most of the time, if you get one, it looks dirty and has a rubber seal around the side, right here in the corners. This one's not rubber, but it'll do. <laughs> if you get one that has a rubber seal around here or a cork seal, some type of seal, not just metal, then you know it's at least fairly quality. Okay, pretty simple job opening your oil cans. I'd like to point out that if you get these quarts of oil on sale somewhere, you can get them anywhere from 75 cents on up. If you like to take advantage of rebates where you mail in and so forth, you can get them for 60 cents on up, but uh, that's a little extra trouble for me. Okay, pretty simple job to open these. Poke one small hole in one side of the can. This gives air room to run in. Just like a pitcher of orange juice or so, not a pitcher, just like a can of fruit punch. Let's put a hole in each side so it pours out nice and easy. Then put your spout all the way down on the opposite side, like so. This course ready to go in. If you want to keep your paint job neat, put a little rag under your can. There you go. Now, the first couple of times, you're probably going to spill a little bit of oil on your engine, but after you do it a few times, you'll catch on. It won't be so much trouble. There we go. See, I got a little on myself. It won't hurt your engine, so don't get paranoid. That was quick, wasn't it? Now I've only got four more to go. All comes in cork cans, as you can see here. Most all American cars use five quarts. Now, after you check your specifications and found out exactly how many quarts of oil you need to put in, don't put in any more or any less. If you run too few quarts of oil in your car, it makes for undue wear on your engine, and internal engine wear is real expensive. Once that breaks down, that's a minimum of at least a couple of hundred dollars. I mean, that's a bare minimum. Okay, 
And if you put too much oil in your car, that's just as bad. If you put too much oil in your car, you have these things in your car that are called rings. They're connected around a little thing called a piston. Keep the oil from getting up where it's not supposed to be. Now, if you get too much oil in there, that oil's gonna get up where it's not supposed to be anyway, which will mess up these little things I just told you about called rings. Now, I don't expect you to understand this, but take my word for it. When they're messed up, your car burns oil from then on out until you get it fixed, which is about a $350 job, I would say. Uh, last time I had it done, it cost me $550. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me? Why'd it happen to you? Why'd it happen to me? Because whoever had the car before me didn't run enough oil in or ran too much, one of the two. I'm not sure. But uh, it did mess my engine up. I had to have it fixed. I was too lazy to fix it myself. <laughs> if you hadn't changed the filter, you wouldn't have to put five quarts of oil in, but you're pretty much defeating your purpose if you don't change the filter. Because the filter has a quart of oil in it. It has li real little bits of metal and all that other bad stuff that you're trying to get out of your engine when you change your oil. Like I said, you're pretty much defeating your purpose. If you don't, you might as well run the oil you got. What if you just change your filter and don't change your work? Still defeating your purpose. Because you still got five or four quarts of oil left in there with all that stuff in it, which wouldn't have been there if the filter was doing its job, which means it's time to change the filter. So okay. you recommend changing the filter as well? Right, you should always change the filter and the oil. You know, one's not much good without the other. Okay. Like I said, rag comes in handy because you're bound to get oil on your hands. As you can see, I hadn't got it on the rest of me. The shirt was dirty before I came. Okay. Do a little hand wiping job. If you're technical about how to get your hands clean, toothbrush will clean your fingernails. Okay, pretty simple job. Just put the uh, cap back on. You've got what we call a dipstick to change your oil, I mean, to check your oil with, not to change it, to check it. Okay. Use a rag, your shirt. If you've got a shirt you don't mind getting dirty, use your shirt. With a dipstick, you might want to get a shot here. Just a little stick sticking out of the engine. It's got a little finger ring in it. Now, it could be anywhere on the engine. On most Chevrolets, it's located on this side of the car. On the driver's Right, on the driver's side, excuse me. Uh, foreign cars, they could be anywhere. I mean, you may have to look for hours. <laughs> okay. I'm fixing two. Okay. Good idea. Now we've got here is a dipstick. I hope you can read the writing here. All right, I got it. Okay, as you can see, we've got two dots here. It says add one quart. Next two dots says full. As long as you've got the oil between these two dots, everything's okay. Don't let it get below here where it says add one quart. If you dip this down into your engine and take it out, and the oil's low enough that you can read any part of this add one quart, it's time to put a quart of oil in. Okay, that's, that's really hazardous to your engine to run it one quart low. So check it once a week or so. If you do a lot of driving, check it every day. I run a couple of hundred miles a day on mine, so I check mine just about every day. If you're the type that only drives to town once in a while, check it once a week or so. But make sure you don't get low on oil because sooner or later it's going to cop. Okay, now when you check your oil, especially after you've changed it, always check it right after you change it. Don't start the engine first. If you've been running around town and you want to come home and check your oil, bring the car home, let it set for about seven or eight minutes before you check your oil. Because while it's running, it pulls the oil all up in the engine, gets it up in all the working parts, the lifters and so forth. Okay, when you check the oil, it's going to read low. Okay, it's almost always going to read a little lower, at least a half quart lower than what the car really is. So pull it up someplace, let it set for seven or eight minutes at least. Then check your oil and you'll get a true reading that way. Here we go. Now I've just put five quarts in here. The oil I've got in here is so clear you can't hardly see it. But it's up to the full mark, it sure is. Okay, hold the spiel there. Okay, can you see it? Let me get it, let me get it again here so maybe you can see it a little better. I smeared it a little bit. Okay. 
Now the oil I've got here is so clear because it's new, I just put it in. Uh -huh. Out here in the sunlight, you can't see it on a stick. Right. Is it on a full mark now? It's up just a little bit past the full mark. That's mainly because the car is, the front end of the car is sitting up. Right. When I let it down and it's level, it'll be right about dead on the full mark. Uh -huh. I've got four quarts, I mean five quarts in, this is a five quart tank. Okie doke. Now that about covers everything you're going to need. All I have to do now is take the axle stands out and back the car down and I'm ready to go. Might be a good idea to park your car over a nice clean spot for about five minutes before you take it anywhere. And if it's going to leak, if you've done something wrong, you hadn't tightened the oil nut up tight enough, the filter wasn't on right, then you'll know pretty soon because oil's going to leak out on the ground. You'll be able to look under your car and there it'll be. After five or six minutes or so, there's no oil on the ground. Should be pretty safe to take off. Now, uh, some people wonder how often you should do this. There's been a lot of trouble calls because people didn't change their oil. Maybe their car didn't get too low on oil. Maybe they didn't get too much oil in it, but they didn't change it often enough. Some guy buys his car in 1928, and uh, 50 years later, he wants to change his oil. Well, most likely, he's not going to have his car 50 years later. You need to change it about every 5,000 miles at the most. I normally change this one between three and four. I like to take extra good care of my car. Uh, standard procedure normally is to change it every 5,000 miles or five months if you don't drive 5,000 miles. Now, if you drive a lot like me, I change my oil about once a month. Okay, that's I save myself about eight bucks a month that way. Okay, 12 times eight. Oh, shoot, that's 96 bucks. I save myself $100 a year changing my own oil. Okay, the initial expense I pointed out with the, sp with the spout and so forth, these parts, should come up to just a little less than $10, okay? Some people, instead of buying a wrench to take their oil pan plug out with, they like to use ratchets, ratchets and sockets. They work a little bit better, but they're more expensive. Now, unless you're gonna get into it, do it yourself fairly serious, you might not want to buy these. This set right here is an exceptionally good set. It's not mine. I couldn't afford it. But uh, these are about, my guess would be about $70. Okay, most people, if they were going to do this, they would go out and they would buy the one socket that fits their oil pan and one ratchet. That you could get for uh, right around another $10. Okay, now, like I said, ratchets and sockets normally work better. They're faster and they're more convenient. But unless you're going to get into this deep, unless you want to do a lot of work on your car, most people just use wrenches. Okay. Something I failed to mention earlier. When you pull your car up on the uh, ramps, a jack, anything, anytime you raise it up for any reason whatsoever, the emergency brake is a must. If you even have an emergency brake that doesn't work, put it on anyway. <clears throat> the emergency brake will keep your car from rolling back at least. Like I have it only halfway up on these ramps. I explained earlier why I couldn't get it up there. I put my emergency brake on. This is going to keep the car from rolling back. Now, just an extra safety precaution. You can never be too safe when you're crawling underneath the car because the car is heavier than you and if it falls it will hurt. Now normally you can do this in about 15 minutes. I don't realize it took us about a half an hour. That's because I was explaining all the details. But normally you can do it in about 15 minutes. And saving eight bucks in 15 minutes is, it's worth it to me. Besides, if you change your oil in your own car and you do the other work yourself, as opposed to hiring somebody else to do it, then it's been done by the most competent person you know, you. In my case, me. <laughs> and that way, I'm sure it's been done right. This is Robbie Jacobs from Cable 10. Good luck with your next oil change.